Now, when it comes to impurity, everything in creation, once it's impure, it cannot become pure again. So if, let's say, there's an animal that became impure, there's no way to purify it. There are bugs. Bugs are always impure. Torah talks about it. And also there are specific types of uh, reptiles and things like that that are also impure. There's no way to purify them. Everything that's impure stays that way. Except man. Except a human being. Where a human being, a Jew can make themselves pure even if they were the most impure person on earth. Even if they were as bad as Menashe. Menashe was an evil Jewish king at some point that became a Kadosh. The symbol of Tshuva. But it was a very difficult Tshuva. It was a very painful Tshuva. But nonetheless, he did Tshuva, the Gemara says. But he made every sin under the sun. You name it, he did it. Murder, stealing, uh, rape, uh, incest, name it, everything. He murdered his own grandfather, which was the prophet Yeshaya. The prophet Isaiah, you you see the book of Isaiah in the uh, the Torah? That was his grandfather. He cut him to pieces. And he murdered a lot of people, but in the end... He did tshuva after Kadosh Baruch Hu gave him one last chance when he was caught by a bunch of uh, cannibalistic goyim that uh, were cooking, decided to cook him. It's in the Torah, it's in the Tanakh. They put him in a big pot and they started cooking him. So in the beginning, Menashe started uh, praying to his idols. Idol A, save me. Babkis, nothing. Idol B, nothing. The sun, nothing. The moon, nothing. The uh, Buddha, nothing. Yoshke, nothing. Everything you want, nothing, 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 nothing. Tried everything. Everything failed. Finally, he got to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if you're real, you see me right now. And I'll do Juba. And Khamim said, look at this chutzpan. Not only does he go against the Shem, kills a bunch of tzaddikim, Not only does he make every possible sin under the sun, but he prays to idols. Before he prays to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, after all of that fails, then he goes to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and he has the nerve to get make demands. Like, if you save me now, then I'll do tshuva. Like, I won't do tshuva now, unless you save me. But this also shows us how much HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves his kids. Where he knows how stupid we are sometimes, and how many mistakes we make, and how we don't know right or left sometimes, because we think that the sin is delicious, we think that the sin is good, and uh, we make the sin, we become, become addicted to it. But then finally we call on a Kadosh Baruch Hu, we say, Hashem, I'll do true life if you save me. And Hashem knows our heart. It's one of our 13 principles of faith, is that Hashem knows our thoughts, meaning He knows what's in our heart, He knows what's in our mind. You don't have to say it. Hashem already knows it. And he knew that Menashe was genuine. And not only did he save him, he saved him in a miraculous way that while he was being cooked in a huge pot, he made the, this pot the first UFO. The first UFO. The pot started flying in the air. Oh, arrived in Yerushalayim. That's what Tanakh says. Pot flew up in the air and arrived all the way to Yerushalayim. And at that moment, Menashe obviously knew that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one and only God. And he did tshuva. And the Gemara, Masechet Sanhedrin, says that Menashe did tshuva, but it's only mentioned at the end of the Tanakh because the tshuva that he did was not completed during his lifetime. Because there were certain sins that he made that he couldn't fix while he was alive. For example, the idolatry that he did there were certain consequences of the idolatry. So until all of the idolatry was removed from the world that he brought into it, his tshuva was not complete. So this was many, many years after he died, but nonetheless his tshuva was complete and he has a share of the world to come. So here we see that a person can transform themselves from being mamash tameh, impure as impure gets, to being so tahol that we mention him in a shiutura that we mention him in a Tanakh, 
that we mention him in the Gemara, that we learn from him. That's the power of a human being, of how great they can get to, but also how lowly they can be.